welcome. I would like to welcome you warmly on this uh, first Interact uh, podcast. It is realized under the auspices of COST and within the framework of, of COST Interact CA2120. Uh, Interact stays for intelligence uh, enabling radio communications for seamless inclusive uh, interactions and uh, its concepts define the technologies to enhance human experience of both human and to human and human to machine communications. Uh, those in this podcast, in this particular one and all the following, we will discuss uh, topics related to new trends, solutions, experiments, achievements and general related to wireless communications of the future. My name is Adrian Klix, I came from Poznan University of Technology and today uh, I have a great uh, pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Professor uh, Laurent Clavier from uh, IMT France. So Laurent, welcome. Uh, Thank you. Orao is a professor in wireless communication. Let me briefly introduce you to the to the audience. Uh, is a wireless professor in wireless communications, expert in IoT physical layer solutions, mainly on AP1, right, and ad hoc networks. Uh, he gave uh, lectures on radio channel, digital communication signal processing, multiple access, and probably many more, if I may guess. Uh, his research activities concern digital communications and the physical layer of wireless networks, uh, and more specifically, energy autonomous sensor networks. He is uh, particularly interested in interference statistical modeling, which is uh, great, mainly on alpha stable distributions and corporates. We will probably come back to this later, I believe and then designing some robust receivers in non-Gaussian environments. And uh, currently he's a steering committee member of this cost action and uh, a chair of this committee, right? So it's again my pleasure to, to welcome you on this first podcast. Uh, so maybe we can start and less, very less officially. So how are you today? Is the weather fine? And then and how are you today, Phil? It's fine. Hello, <laughs> it's, it's quite hot here in the... Uh, yeah, yes. it's probably a vacation time soon, and uh, yeah, so the, the weather is also a vacation. So, okay, uh, as this is the first podcast, as I, as I said, uh, uh, could you present uh, to us what is the concept of this uh, cost interact action? So the purpose, the goals, uh, I mean, yeah, could you just introduce it? Okay, so interact is a cost action, and if... if there are two main objectives in a, in a cost action. One, of course, is to produce some uh, scientific research and, and possibly to impact the socio-economic world mm -hmm. and interact in that uh, purpose addresses uh, challenges faced by radio communication networks. So that's uh, one of the goal of the action. The second objective, which is perhaps as important as the first one, <laughs> is to create a, a network, a network of researchers, a network of people that are interesting by the topic, so that people can work together and find probably better solutions than the, they were alone. So it's a combination of the science and this networking and I mean to meet, exactly. meet each other and exchange ideas. So it's a great, great concept. But uh, this particular cost is uh, not the first activity of that kind, right? I believe that there is quite a long history of them. So this cost interact, as we can say, this is a continuation of good tradition, right? Do, do you, could you just say something more about the previous actions? How they relate to, the, to the, yes. this one? Yes, so so if we do that, we need to to go back a little bit in the past, you know, to go back 40 years ago. And uh, wow. there was a first action at that time, which was called Cost 207 on radio communications already. I, if I remember well more on antennas, mm -hmm. I was not part of it. <laughs> and it's probably the one that can be identified as the first action of that in that series of action. Uh, and it's it started this first action started to create a little bit this network of researchers that I was talking a little bit before, uh, and uh, of course they wanted to continue working together, so they tried to submit a new proposal, and hopefully it was successful, and then it continued like this and interact if we. <laughs> Goes that way back. It's uh, eight eight action in, in that already. line. Wow. Yeah. So I think it it has really created a, a, a strong community in Europe of of researchers on radio communication networks, and also it has had good impacts on the development of some of the technologies that we some 
Uh, I think mm -hmm. the most famous results are about radio channel modeling, but we can find many good contributions of this series of actions on the industry of telecommunication. So this goes two, three, one, probably, right? And these are quite yeah. famous, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Exactly. And th and this this one is called interact, right? I mean, that means something because this, of course, the acronym. Oh, but probably yes, it interact. Has some <laughs> hidden meaning, I believe. <laughs> yes, yes, it's it's um, okay. The, the first reason is a tech, tech scientific and technical reason. You know, interact um, is interaction between the human world and the physical world, or even between humans themselves. So communication networks are there to, to facilitate this interaction. So this is one of the reasons of interact. And of course, uh, the second reason is this interaction between people. So uh, it's a bit more hidden if you read the proposal, but this is evident in the, obviously in the, in the head of all the mm -hmm. proponents. Yeah. Well, but uh, does it mean that, I mean, if this is interact and you, you mentioned that it's uh, networking, so is this uh, action devolved only to scientists or, I mean, I mean, who is this action for? I mean, mainly for I mean, experienced students, ex -student, experienced students as well, but experienced researchers for the younger students or, I mean, for who? The, the idea is to have something which is as open as possible. So, of course, there are many scientists from academia, from research centers, young, less young, <laughs> a bit older, uh, any, any time. We, one, one of our goal is really to have some young researchers to, to, to take part of their growing research and to try to put them on, to give them good advices. Uh, so that's one part, but also we, we really need to have some industrials. So industrials from telecommunication industry, of course, but also we would be very interested. This is sometimes more complicated to have industrials from what we call the verticals, so the applications areas. And of mm -hmm. course, we also would like to have people from more societal challenges or social sciences. It could also be interesting to create some interaction with them. But uh, of course, the core of the, of the work remains on technical aspects of radio communication networks. So this is a bit more tricky. Yes, and this, I believe, brings us uh, very smoothly to the next question. As you mentioned, this uh, verticals, I believe that these verticals are somehow reflected in the project structure, isn't it? So we have yes, in fact, mm -hmm. yes, yes. F uh, in fact, in the project structure, you find the, the first, you find the, the basis, what I call the, the fundamentals, which means the disciplines that mm -hmm. uh, we as researchers are used to work on. So channel modeling, signal processing, network uh, modelization and operation. So this is uh, what we call the working group. And then we've got a, a set of verticals. Uh, there are four verticals like health, like uh, industry, uh, vehicular technology or big city, smart cities, big cities. And, and so this is four verticals, so more applicative mm -hmm. oriented aspects of course these two aspects have to be really <laughs> interacting again <laughs> so this is uh, a good point but we also have a third a third aspect which is uh which is less technical but more on the other qualities that researcher must have and dissemination also yes, and organizing yes, yes. training school organizing short term so there are a lot of uh, actions which is taken in the action to to, mm -hmm. to do to, to create the, the good the good ingredients for the interaction and the good uh, scientific aspect of this so this is very important so there mm -hmm. are three mm -hmm. big parts and all things tries to work together so you have this vertical mm -hmm. and horizontal structure yes so what were thought right and uh, do you know maybe how many i mean persons are involved um, approximately based on the previous meetings are there tens hundreds i mean do you know how many people I don't involved, know. Sorry. yes personal, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, there are there are more than f i haven't checked the, <laughs> the last figure this morning but there are more than 400 wow. people registered to the actions and i think we are close to 100 or 120 institutions right coming from nearly all european countries but also from outside europe 
people from, mm -hmm. from China, from the United States, from many other countries. Um, so yes, it's quite a, a big action. <laughs> and and yeah, sorry. It's, sorry, yes, each time we have a meeting, it's so it will be the third meeting that we will have in uh, September this year. So we have two previous meetings, which were a bit complicating, especially the first one, which was still in the COVID period. Yeah, so, yeah, so that makes but we already have mm -hmm. 80 to 100 people coming to the action, plus some people um, attending remotely. So it makes mm -hmm. 150 pe people to the attending to a meeting each time. And OK, we'll see what is going to happen in, in the next one, but it will perhaps be increasing. Mm -hmm. well, in general, I believe it's uh, it's a challenge to to manage such a huge uh, action. But okay, four hundred it's a great number. But if someone would like to be involved, so what? Uh, I mean, what should be done? I mean, what are, are there any costs for entering so, the action? Or I mean, the, you know, I would say I, would, I I will say it like that. The, the only cost for one person to to attend to to participate to the action is just to produce a little bit of of science. <laughs> Of the technical results and to present them at least once a year to the to the member of the action. That's the only mm -hmm. cost you have because um, registering to the action is free. So you, okay. you just go on the website and you follow the links and, and mm -hmm. that's fine. Then then you can have a, some cost if you want to attend to the meeting because we don't have enough money to, to pay everybody to reimburse every, everybody. We only reimburse some mm -hmm. management mm -hmm. committee members. We, it, is, it means two persons per country. So most of the people who comes to the meeting, they pay the, just their travel okay. and the meals and stuff like this. And that's okay. the only cost. On the other side, you can benefit from short-term scientific missions. So you can, this means you can have an, uh, one week uh, travel in another country, in another lab to, to make your research. And this can be supported by the actions. And, usually not necessarily pay everything, but we can have a, a support on this. And you can attend to some training schools mm -hmm. that we organize mm -hmm. also and, and many other so many, types many of opportunities. Things. Many opportunities. Mm. And uh, I'm interesting, uh, I mean, you are a chair, right? So you have many obligations, commitments, but uh, I mean, you personally, as a scientist, what do you like the most in this action? Is it networking or scientific or exchange? What I like the most is, is, is <laughs> for me, is, um, is um, warmth of people. You know, I'm <laughs> searching for my words in English. <laughs> it's uh, um, people are very friendly. So you go there and you talk about science, but in a very um, friendly atmosphere, and you can really tell your last results without any. Mm -hmm. risk of being <laughs> stolen or whatever you, you can imagine but you can really talk about science it's very friendly you can have your the young researchers the phd students that comes present their work and they will be they will have good advices and it's a very good place to to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. often much better than in a <laughs> in a conference or something like that to to, to, to present your work so this the fact that people are who are there and who attend to the meeting and who comes there are very friendly people and you can really talk about research, you can really make progress in mm -hmm. a very mm -hmm. good atmosphere. That's really my preferred thing in this cost actions. I must say that I will probably answer in a similar way <laughs> from my <laughs> side, from my side. Okay, so uh, I mean, and maybe last question related to the action itself. Uh, you as a chair again, probably you have some expectations, some let's say far end goals. So what what do you think what could be achieved or what should be? What do you think what could be achieved? As we know, the, the key results of the action, what do you think? It's, 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 it's a tricky question. I know, I know. <laughs> my, my, my feeling is that we are in a key key time, in a, in a very special time. There has been others in, in history, but this is a special time. We start 5G, we start thinking about 6G, we start deploying and operating 5G so so and and we we have this communication networks that since GSM or even before 
increase the performance, increase the performance, increase the performance. And on the other side, we've got mm -hmm. humans, people that, you know, you heard all this stuff about um, <laughs> using your phones too, too much. And so if you've got kids, you know, stop stop playing yes, with yes, on, on your screen. Yes, yes. And you've got, on, on the last side, you've got this environmental considerations, energy, energy, and materials, which are, which are tricky. So, so my, the, 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 it's not uh, really uh, <laughs> something that I would like to see out of the action. There's not one thing that is okay. very clear for me, but only to, to help the scientific and industrial community to go towards some, some more human friendly radio mm -hmm. communication. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure the concept is very clear, but <laughs> mm -hmm. that's a good vision. Uh, so that, that's that's, and I think this community is very mm -hmm. uh, has got power for that. Has got the you know, is they can they can. There are many people. There are many strong people. There are many influential people, and we are the scientific community. We have to say our words on on what things should become. So so I think we can yeah, true. influence things. It's some sort of obligation, right, from that side. Mm -hmm. But okay, so so now I, I came to my final question, and I, I would say that the key question: if we have this vision, so how this alpha stable distribution and corpus, what <laughs> what will be the role here? <laughs> okay, the link is is quite <laughs> it's not so straightforward. <laughs> Um, you you know we increase. Uh, let me explain things like this. We we increase the number of of communication links at the same time. At the the density of communicating devices. Uh, of, so this is one trend we have in telecommunication, and the other trend. So the other trend is also to have some very flu fluent communication, fluid communication, sorry, uh -huh. I think this is a better word. <laughs> um, it's a bad uh, friend in French, so uh -huh. difficult uh -huh. for me. So, uh -huh. and we should, um, so f for this, we, we have, there are two, two things which are, which are becoming very important in, a, in a scientific aspects is, is both this dependent structure that you, you can find between uh, between all the nodes that are communicating because you, you increase the, the density of things. So now when you have two, two things which are separate, separated by a few meters, perhaps they have very common mm -hmm. <laughs> characteristics mm -hmm. in the behavior. And the second one is that we are more and more interested by things that when it does not work well, and this becomes rare, more rare and more rare. We want to have some things working 99.999 i don't know how many nine you will put behind percent of the time so but but we need to make our research on the 0. 0.00001 uh -huh, percent uh -huh, research uh -huh. to do that in a, for one way at, at least in statistics is to use this heavy tail distribution so tail distribution that will not neglect <laughs> so much these rare events that are better yeah, to model right. these rare events that, mm -hmm. that's what we use usually and this is one of the reasons I, I i like the alpha stable distributions because they, they can do that quite well and it's a very powerful mathematical tool and the other tool i am using quite uh, i try to use quite a lot is copulas which model this dependence between space or frequency bands or whatever you, mm -hmm. you want mm -hmm. to imagine so that's that's how i would explain my interest for our stable distribution and copula so my main research topics so it seems to me that the definity i will ask you again not not now but later on and uh, as the action will evolve and then last to for another interview but focusing only on these aspects <laughs> because it's <seems> quite <laughs> okay. interesting and so i believe also the listeners will be happy to listen about more about that uh, so now i would like to really thank you uh, for uh, for this uh, for this talk uh, it was a pleasure to discuss these uh, aspects i hope that all the uh, listeners they, they have i mean more knowledge about the action about the goal and uh, from my side again i'd like to thank you and i wish you vacation time good vacation time 
so it will start soon yes. I hope. Uh, and uh, so thank you thank you much more so to remind uh, our guest uh, my guest our guest was professor Laurent Clavier right from France so uh, thank you for uh, joining us and for uh, listening and uh, thank you very much yeah thank you bye so uh, I would uh, like also to invite uh, all of you for our next uh, podcast, which will be uh, released approximately within in the monthly uh, monthly manner. So thank you and goodbye.